Good morning boys and welcome back to Online Art. I hope you're having the most wonderful day. So today we are going to be making our kites. Now the template I sent you for the kites is a little bit tricky. So Mr. G and I had a lot of fun on Friday making the kite together. The thing about this activity is it's meant to be fun. It's not meant to be stressful, it's not meant to be complicated, it's just a fun activity. If your kite works, it works and that will be absolutely super. But if it doesn't, it's a good experience, it's a good learning curve, okay? So let's give it a go, do our best and I'm going to walk you through things just with a few cutaways so you can see what I'm talking about. So boys, please make it bigger than we've made it. We did our small one as part of a demonstration so you could see things clearly. I think you can see the big rods nice and clearly in our video. But for you, you're going to please use the inches. So I've put the measurements in the team, um, what 20 inches is in centimeters and what 16 inches is in centimeters, what six inches is in centimeters. And the reason for this is that a kite is meant to fly and the thing that makes it fly is the sail, right? So obviously there's a lot to do with force and things, we won't go into it, but um, you need a big sail to be able to harness the wind, to catch the wind and to fly, okay? So our little small guy, it will only fly if you really run fast with it and have a lot of force, but a bigger kite will fly better in the wind. turned it a bit to make it tighter. You have got your rolled paper and you want to just tighten it, just stick your finger on the top and see if you can tighten it any more. And then you have your rod. And we've put masking tape in the... We've put masking tape in the middle, but to make it more secure, maybe put masking tape all the way along. So just a, a little thing of masking tape all the way along just to make it nice and tight. So Mr. G and I have now got our rolls and what you do is you take the masking tape and in the middle you're gonna stick your masking tape. So I'm gonna come by Mr. G. cutting your rods you need to make sure that you put masking tape on the ends otherwise it's going to unravel and it's going to be hard to roll it up again okay so before you cut like Mr. G's done you're going to put your masking tape so say my finger is the rod you're gonna put your masking tape and then you're going to cut after the masking tape we're now putting tape masking tape right at the end so that when you cut it, it doesn't explode. Yes, that's very true. And then you take your ruler, you measure 20 inches. 20 inches. So we are using inches. I have put the measurements in the team because we don't use inches in Zimbabwe. We use centimeters. And then... Cut! Yeah! Hooray! It came out nice, eh? Very good. 16 inches for the short rod and 20 inches for the longer rod. In our video, boys, this is very important, we have used centimeters. I think it's just easier for you guys to see and also you can see the thickness 
of the rods better on the camera. Um, it's easier for you to see what we're doing, the technique we're using. But please use inches. All right, and you go to your ruler. You measure again, 16. This time it's 16, not 20. And you put your tape, remember to tape it, otherwise it's gonna pop. There you go, nice and tight. And then you're gonna cut it after the masking tape. Good. There Wonderful. you go. Let's show them our things. Okay, two little rolls and they're both different sizes. When you are putting your rods together, please make sure that your top, you measure six inches from the top and then you put your, um, your rod going sideways. Your smaller rod is the one going sideways and your bigger rod is the one going downwards, okay? So our bigger rod and our smaller rod, our smaller rod is going to be six inches from the top. What Mr. G is doing now is he's going to be using the string to help secure it and we're gonna use masking tape as well. So you're gonna use some string, you're gonna go around the bottom like a diagonal and then another diagonal and then another diagonal. So you're gonna use it diagonally to try and secure it. And then, once you've done your diagonals, you're gonna use your masking tape to secure it nice and tight, okay? But not, yeah, so it's just connected and it won't come undone. You can tie your string as well, maybe. All right. So Mr. G is now tying his string and then he's going to put his masking tape to make sure that it doesn't come undone. Right on top of the string. Make sure it does nice and tight. Don't overdo it, but so it's secure. So boys, now we're going to start the frame of the kite and we're going to use string. So here's our string and it says, this part might be a bit tricky. So if you're younger, if you're grade three or four, maybe get your parents to help you. Um, this part might be a bit tougher for young kids. Press the ends of your rods with some scissors or a butter knife. Scissors is better. The indentation should be the same, okay? Um, starting at the top. So we get to our top of our kite and sideways like this. We're going to make indentations with our scissors. Don't cut the kite at the top. Just make a dent. And then you're going to use where you've put your dent, you're going to put your string. Okay, so we're going to get that down there. And we're going to tape it on for the start. I'm going to go to the next one. So you see, boys, it's going to start now. Once we start taping it down, it's going to start forming the outline. And then you're going to get some tape and you're going to make sure that your frame stays nicely around. Okay, so you're going to put your tape around just to secure it on and you're going to do that for every single side so that it sticks nicely. Alright, let me just get this one done and then we'll move on to the next. So now that we have got our string nicely and tightly around our edge and we taped it down so that it doesn't come unstuck, we are now going to go into the next part, which is making our sail. So the sail is basically part of the kite that helps it fly. Right. We're going to lay another sheet of newspaper like I've done on the table using your tape measure or ruler like we've done. Measure. Draw straight lines that run parallel. So parallel means basically this line is parallel to that line. It means basically what if what, your line of your string is going to be exactly the same distance away, but it's going to be two inches from the outside of your kite. We've used centimeters for ours, and that is how we are going to make our sail. 
Once I've done my two inches on each side, I'm going to connect them. I'm going to cut them out and then we're going to stick them onto our frame. I've now cut my little kite out of the newspaper using two centimeters, but if you're using the right measurements, you use two inches, then you are going to fold each side of the sail over the string and secure each with tape. Okay, boys, now we're going to need a lot of tape, um, so I'm just going to cut a whole lot and then just use it like that. So fold, so you've got your two centimeters away from the kite, fold it over the string, and secure it with tape. Okay, this part doesn't have to look pretty boys, it just has to be practical. So we are taping our paper over the string oh what a lovely kite <laughs> I think if you can definitely use sticks instead of using the newspaper it's very difficult to exactly get thin enough that's a good paper. idea um, but Mr. G and I wanted to show you that it's, you don't have to get it perfect just try it so you're going to take your string, make sure that you have one end at the top and the other end at the bottom like this. And then you're going to tape it boys. So you tape your string then, at the bottom and tape it at the top. Cut some masking tape. Tape it down like Mr. G's doing, nice and tight, make sure it's all there. Yeah. And then tape it at the bottom. Tape it again at the bottom. And boys, make sure you're enjoying this, eh? Hey? It is a lot of fun. Mr. G and I are enjoying it. <laughs> So what Mr. G is doing now is he is doing a string from the left to the right or from the right to the left going okay. across. Can you see? From there to there. The other side. Yes. So he's going to stick it down there as well and then he's going to do masking tape in the middle as well. So watch as Mr. G cuts the string to the right size. Make sure you have enough masking tape for this, guys. Yeah, it uses a lot of masking tape. Masking tape right on the top. But not onto the cardboard or the newspaper. You're going to just stick it so that the strings are stuck together, but not stuck yeah. to the cardboard or the newspaper, rather. Here we go. Almost done. Nice and fastened. Now, Mr. G has just done this little section here, and I'm going to show you the next part. So we do not have yarn in the art room, but in order to make the kite fly, we don't stick it on the bottom because then it won't fly. We have to stick it and tie it where we've tied our little um, masking tape between the two strings there. Okay, so I'm going to tie this here, and then I'm going, I'm going to tie it nice and tightly so it doesn't come undone. And then I'm going to do some rectangles for you. We are going to make the tail of the kite. That's where all of the string comes in, all right? We're going to roll it up nicely, but for now, I'm going to make the bows for the kite. So you know when you have a kite flying in the wind, they usually put a little bit of decoration. That's what we're going to do now. It doesn't have to be fancy. They say cut four or five rectangles or bow tie shapes out of a piece of paper. Okay? So, I'm just going to draw some rectangles on my nice really pink paper. So 
Mr. D and I are putting four triangles, four rectangles, sorry, onto our kite. You can make them bow shaped if you would like. You can make them a nice shape, you can make them however you want to. We're just doing this for the sake of the video. Okay, now we are going to stick on our bows. So boys, how are we going to stick on our bows? Centre your, your um, rectangle or your bow or whatever you're using. Put them wherever you feel like you want to put them. Close-ish to the kite though, like I'm doing. Like that, that's what I want mine to look like. And then I'm going to get my masking tape, which you need a lot of for this exercise. And I'm going to, in the center of the rectangle, stick it down onto the string. Remember to do it on the side of the kite that's got the poles and everything, and not on the other side. It's just for the way that it looks, just to make it look nicer. Stick down your things, because remember this is going to go in the wind and we don't want our little rectangles to fly away. Okay, for our little rectangles, can we use different colors? You can use different colors, yes. Okay. We've just used red. All right, because that's we good. have red in front of us. <laughs> but boys, if you want to make them different colors and you have different colors, you're more than welcome to use them. It's your project. It's a fun project. Just to end off, this is a fun activity. We're celebrating International Peace Day. We're celebrating peace. We are having fun. And you, once you have finished everything that we've done in the video, you can stick your peace pictures onto the sail of the kite. Okay, stick them nice, stick, stick them down nicely, make sure you don't break the newspaper or the wrapping paper, whatever you've used. Um, and you can give it a go and try and fly outside. It's not a very windy day today, so maybe tomorrow or whatever day there's wind, you can give it a go. But thank you for following along. I hope you enjoyed this exercise in this video. The point of it is to have fun. We're not going to mark you on whether or not your kite flew. We are going to just mark it on effort. This is purely for effort. It's for fun. It's also really good to build things because it makes us think about how we put things together. It's part of a creative process. Thank you so much, boys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day.